The Kenya School of Law was established in 1963 when a total of 11 students were admitted. From its establishment till the early 2000s, the school was located on Valley Road at the current University of Nairobi's Dental School. The school was a department in the Attorney General's office until 1995 when it was removed from that office and placed under the management of the newly established Council of Legal Education. And after this, um, this position remained uh, until uh, 2012 when as a result of um, a task force that had been established in 2006, uh, the school was delinked from the Council of Legal Education um, by virtue of the Kenya School of Law Act 2012 and the Legal Education Act of 2012. So the Kenya School of Law Act established the school as an independent institution, whereas the Legal Education Act established the council um, as an independent regulator of the legal education. The new functions included training on legislative drafting, training of judicial officers, and organizing special short courses amongst others. So the units that are taught are the Advocates Training Program. They are nine in number. They are statutory in that they are provided for under the law. And this includes civil litigation, criminal litigation, probate and administration, legal writing and drafting, trial advocacy, legal practice management, professional ethics, conveyancing and commercial transaction. At the Kenya School of Law, this is where the rubber meets the road because the program is intense. Um, the training is rigorous and the time is short. Unlike campus whereby you have four years, at the Kenya School of Law you only have nine months to do your classwork and you have six months to work at a law firm or a legal institution. Therefore, with the Kenya School of Law you are required to put into practice everything you've learned for the four years and of course you come and also learn new things. Therefore, for someone who is aspiring to join the Kenya School of Law, and to become an advocate, you need to be, be, to be very well prepared. You need to be adverse with the courses that are being offered at your school, because those are, those are the very same things that you're going to learn at the Kenya School of Law, and you're required to do that in a very short time. The expanded mandate was not implemented until after 2006, when a task force chaired by Professor Gidu Migai recommended to the then Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs Ms. Martha Karua, that the school needed to undertake continuing professional development and paralegal studies in addition to its traditional functions. Our other um, program is a Diploma in Paralegal Studies and that is aimed at preparing um, persons who will be um, support staff in the legal sector, whether in a law firm, in the courts, uh, in private companies and so on and so forth. So the Act sets out the admission criteria for both categories. Um, for an advocate, you must have uh, performed at a particular level in your KCSE. Uh, that is uh, having a mean grade of C plus and a B in English or Swahili. Uh, and then done your undergraduate and um, come here to the, to the school. The school implements the core mandate through two divisions, the academics division and the Continuing Professional Development Research and Projects Division. Kenya School of Law is a very interesting institution. The program is rigorous. The teaching is good, however. The lecturers are quite engaging, quite understanding, and they are ready to take students all the way up to the time when they sit for their council legal education examination. And uh, not only do we learn how to become advocates, but we also learn how to develop character. In KSL, it's very lenient. I knew little to know uh, much about law, but then now coming out of KSL, I'd say I know so much. So I'd say my interaction here in KSL has been amazing. The school has maintained ISO 9001 2015 certification because of its desire to maintain high standards of service delivery that satisfy the needs of the customer through continual improvement. All our processes and strategies are such that they all work toward the goal of excellence. So the mandate of the school under Section 4 of the Act is to train persons to be advocates, 
to provide continuing professional development, um, to provide paralegal uh, training. Um, fourthly is uh, other specialized uh, training, other specialized legal training. Um, the fifth is uh, cons um, curricula, develop curriculum and examinations. And lastly, to provide projects, research and consultancies. The Advocates Training Program, ATP, has the objective of training lawyers for entry into the legal profession. Training is conducted in 18 months, 12 months in-house and 6 months pupillage or internship. Teaching in ATP is conducted on a clinical basis, practical for the purpose of equipping the learner with skills to practice law in the real-life situation. The classes are divided into farms, which are study groups where legal problems and issues are thoroughly discussed. One of the topics that is usually taught in the ATP program, we have a unit called mooting. So students get to participate and have a feel of what to expect in, expect in practice. So moot court competition is basically a simulation of court and then there is a winner. So students have actually traveled out of the country due to moot court competitions. So this is one of the great opportunities that we get to engage in. For one to successfully complete ATP, one has to pass in all the nine units, civil litigation, criminal litigation, probate and administration, legal writing and drafting, trial advocacy, professional ethics and practice, legal practice management, conversing and commercial transactions. We conduct uh, three sets of exams for the PTP, that is uh, termly because we have the three terms but for the pre it's only once a year, we are ordinarily in January of every year. In every academic institution, you would expect that uh, there will be disciplinary issues. Most of them uh, range from issues of pupillage, especially when students are on pupillage, that is uh, what we, is the equivalent of attachment. You find that uh, there could be some misconduct, maybe some student has left the station without notifying the master, or they may have uh, carried themselves in a manner that does not befit the profession. We engage learners at two different levels, full-time and part-time lecturers. As a student, it's been very convenient and has allowed most of the people who are working to get an opportunity because you see, in the evening we start classes around 5.30, so it's not going to affect my, my, my working time. So 5.30 to around 8.30, we are done with class is very convenient and lecturers are very accommodating. Part-time lecturers bring in a wealth of practice experience and practice which is key to teaching our ATP students. Our ATP students participate in legal aid in and out of Kenyan prisons. This helps the students to have a real scenario before even being admitted to the bar. The school has key linkages with other institutions which include the Higher Education Loans Board, HELB, the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, the Advocates Complaint Commission and the Advocates Disciplinary Tribunal, to mention but a few. Um, the task force made recommendations on uh, legal education, uh, how to streamline legal education in the country and among the recommendations which came out of that uh, task force uh, was that uh, there should be a continuing professional program uh, which would uh, target working people, uh, lawyers and uh, related disciplines who are working and it's meant to build their skills in law to further their skills. Through the Department of Research and Projects, the division also undertakes research and consultancy projects. So far, the flagship consultancy that the division has undertaken since the year 2012 has been legal audit and compliance, and more recently, governance audit. Legal and governance audits are now an important exercise that address institutions' legal and governance risks and seek to mitigate or manage those risks in a most effective and efficient manner mainly through institutionalizing continual preventive measures. The two types of audit are now required of every state corporation under the Mwongozo Code 2015. The Human Resource and Administrations Department plays a critical support role to ensure that the school's core mandate 
is achieved effectively and efficiently. Specifically, we ensure that the school has qualified staff deployed correctly. Career progression instruments have enabled us to ensure that we have highly competent staff in all the departments and the sections. In addition, we ensure that the requisite physical infrastructure is in place and well maintained. The library comprises of print resources over 10,000 and we are having access to online resources through subscription and a CLISC, that's Kenya Library Association. Those resources can be accessed through the Kenya School of Law website and through the library portal, which is on the website of the school. I decided uh, to join the Kenya School of Law uh, to undertake the PTP program because growing as a child, I wanted to be a lawyer and uh, my qualification only allowed me to join the PTP program, which is a foundation for the career progression towards the LLB and ultimately become a lawyer to advocate especially for human rights and the legal needs that the community are seeking for. I have been uh, among the lucky students to get an opportunity to intern at a law firm and I've been able to apply the skills in which I've been taught in class, like uh, for example, in our unit of legal writing and drafting, I've been able uh, to get the practical aspect of drafting uh, basic uh, documents uh, at the law firm. The aim of the program is to prepare students who become the middle cadre in the legal profession and the graduates of the program who are now known as paralegals can serve in law firms, in the judiciary, in NGOs and in companies, supporting lawyers working in those organizations. The school is lucky to be located in a serene environment in Karen, which is not only conducive for learning, but also for other activities, especially in the hospitality industry. The school has excellent facilities for conferences, workshops, training, social events, available at very competitive rates. Our services include conferences, gardens, weddings, retreat, team building, accommodation, and a restaurant. We also have auxiliary services, swimming pool, hire of transport, laundry services, sauna, and sport facilities. Under sports, we have several sports that are happening. We have a mini golf, we have rugby, we have soccer, we have a basketball team. I've actually participated in athletics and football. I've had a chance to win a silver in the long distance race. The school prides in offering great services to all our stakeholders. Currently, the school has two campuses. Our main campus is located in Karen along Langata South Road, Nairobi, while our town campus is located within CBD along Moy Avenue. Development House 5th Floor.